Hey, hey, welcome back to Snapbolt Games. My name is Max, and I'm here with another Popper League. And today I'm going to be playing Jund PhD. And why is it Jund PhD? That's because we got to learn. We got to learn to get a PhD, and we're going to try to learn in Jund here. I'll get into this deck tech, but first let me shout out my channel. It's youtube.com slash snapbolt. There's a link in the description below to subscribe. Appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel, helps me out, throw a like on this video, ring the bell if you want to see when my new videos come out. They come out every day. Um, a lot of popper content, playing some other stuff as well, Q, modern, something for everyone, but focusing on popper just because I'm having a lot of fun with it. I like to brew, I like to play tier one decks, so again, something for everyone. If you like my content want me to keep making it, consider subscribing. Thanks so much. Okay. Now, again, this is Jun PhD, and we gotta learn and we gotta, you know, take some lessons in order to pass the class. So we're we're gonna be learning today. And um, this is basically just a classic Jun shell in Popper, but we've made some changes. Made room for cram session and field trip, and then just playing this massive lesson board of nine lessons. Um, I when I originally brewed this up, I was like, I wanna play cram session, field trip, and rise of Exodus. Uh, but it was just it was just like Rise of Exodus just sucked. It was just like six mana, and a lot of times I was like, I don't even have a target for this. So I think these ones were good. I played a couple games, and Field Trip did impress me. So it'll be interesting. We don't have Llanowar Visionary. Instead, I'm playing Field Trip, and it's kind of a similar card if you think about it. Llanowar Visionary is three mana, two, two, taps for green mana, and then this is essentially three mana, and then you get a forest, so it taps for green mana. Um, but instead of drawing a card, we learn. And so there's upside to both. Obviously, drawing a card, you can draw powerful cards, um, you know, like these that are in our main deck. But you can also just draw extra lands when you don't want lands. With the learn, we kind of draw overcasted stuff. Um, but we don't draw lands, and we have our choice of what we want to draw. Um, we can draw a 5-mana 4-4. Four, four. We can draw a Fractal Summoning. We can draw a, an Environmental Science. So there's a lot of things um, good about the lesson package, and mostly it's the modality of getting the choice. For example, Field Trip, it's kind of like you can have it be a Cultivate. Three mana, get a Forest, and then you get Environmental Science. You pay two more mana, so yeah, worse than Cultivate. But then you can get another land and gain two life. So obviously that's going to be worse than Cultivate, but at the same time, you still have Field Trip, and then you can just get a land and a five mana 4-4. Four, four. So it has these options for you. It's kind of like a charm or a command where each mode you get is worse than what you would get if you didn't have the modality. But because you get choices, it costs a little bit more, but it can still be worth it. And I think this is actually pretty sweet. I will say, I don't think this deck is that great just because I don't think Jund is that great. Um, but I think it's still going to be a fun league. And I think we have a chance to do well. Um, I think our bird matchup is just incredible because we have four cram session main and two environmental sciences. Um, so we just have so much life gain in, in the main. Uh, that's why I don't even have any weather the storms or anything in the sideboard just because we can gain so much life naturally. But other than that, it's like a pretty standard gen list. I'll go over the whole deck here. 23 lands. I'm playing much more basics than typically people play. Um, one, I wanted more untapped lands. We have better mana because of environmental science and cram session because this is black green to cast. If we have swamp or forest plus another land, we can cram session for environmental science and fix our mana that way. So our mana is actually much better than a standard gen deck. We still have the classic four bounce lands, only three thriving lands, one bog, four ash barons, the rest basics. You also need enough basic forests for field trip. So that's why we're playing that. Four Lightning Bolt, just because um, this is a really efficient removal spell, just a good card. Even if you Cascade into it, you can go face. Three Cast Down, three Edict. I think Edict is actually a big reason to play Jund. It just really helps you against Mono White Heroic, Boggles, stuff like that. Um, two Cannonade, which is what I didn't have when I originally built with the Rise of Exodus. Uh, but I think having Cannonade in the main is another draw to this deck. It's even good in this, even better in this deck because we don't have Llanowar Visionary to kill our own creatures. Uh, so that's sweet. Three bonders, just because, especially with the learn, you usually have stuff to do. You don't necessarily have time to draw cards anyway, but bonders is still a good ramp and mana fixer. Plus, if we do get, like, disrupted, we can draw cards with it. Four packmate. I think, you know, foretelling packmate on two is often what this deck wants to do. It's a really clunky deck, but a lot of times you just go, like, turn one, tap land or ash barons, turn two, foretell packmate, turn three, play packmate. And that's a pretty common uh, sequence for this deck. Like I said, really slow and clunky. 
but good late game with these Cascaders. And then two Thorns, um, taking the Monarch is a good way to just go over the top. And then let me talk about these lessons for a second before we get, get into the games. I think you definitely want two Environmental Sciences and a couple of practice games I played. I actually played one League with the other version. Didn't go well, but that's beside the point. Um, I really did like the two Environmental Science because sometimes you do want to get both when you just want to continue to hit land drops. Uh, I found Environmental Science is a card I went for a lot. Expanded Anatomy. I haven't actually gone for this yet. Uh, Magic, Magic Online is not letting me make the card bigger, so sorry for that. But Expanded Anatomy is like one that seems good, especially with like Boarding Party or Dino to just have access to. But um, I haven't actually gotten it yet. Wow, Magic Online is just... I think, I think Magic Online just froze. <laughs> I can't move cards. I can't enlarge anything. Just, yeah, Magic Online just frozen. But I think, I think I'm still recording. Okay, I, let me just try to finish this intro, then we'll get into round one. One intro to Prophecy, one intro to Annihilation, and then Summoning is kind of actually hard to cast at Black Black. But I think Elemental Summoning, even though it's red red, it's one of the better ones, just because it's more efficient than Fractal Summoning. You might only need one, but I'm trying two. And then we just have high impact cyborg cards for our other six cyborg cards that we can actually bring in. Two Power Blast, two Shaman, one Cannonade, and a Tranquility. So let me see if I can fix Magic Online, and I'll see you in round one. All right, welcome to, <laughs> welcome to round one. We got we got Dr. Lou in here. <laughs> he is ready for round one. He is hungry for treats. <laughs> wait, wait. Let's see if we can show off a, a weight on, on cam here. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, good job, bud. Wow, Lewin is learning. Let's see if we can learn. Um, I, I wanted to get him in the intro, but he was actually hiding underneath the couch, so I wasn't able to get him, but we got him for round one. So if you stuck around <laughs> until now, good for you because we got Luz here. Good job, bud. Okay, let's play first. And this hand has just got to be a mulligan. If we had like another land, like an Ash Barons, maybe we could keep it. But we just can't keep this one land hand with this with this deck. It just doesn't work. This one is clunky, but it's actually pretty good. This one's fine. Um, let's keep this hand. And I'm not sure what to put back. I think just one of these field trips. I don't know if we need two field trips. <laughs> I don't know what he's doing. We're on the play, so we just sweep. Uh, swamp and F6. And let's see what we're up against here. Ugh. All right, I'm going to put him down because he looks a little uncomfortable and I got to focus on the game. Okay. We're against Ancient Den Thraven. So it could just be Affinity, could be Brute Squad. We don't know yet. We go Gruel Turf, Bounce, Swamp, and Pass. Probably covered in Gloon here now. Next turn, I'm probably just playing Field Trip. Wow, Mount... Oh. Oh, it's Boros Monarch. I think I know this player, and I think they usually play Boros Monarch. Interesting. Okay. Well, I still like Field Trip here, right? I can just get Environmental Sciences to continue to hit land drops, and I get a to hit a land... Like, I get to ramp right here. Seems good. See, now, again, this is just like a bad Cultivate in a way. But then, like, in the later game, when I draw more field trips, it's much better than Cultivate, because I get to get a threat. Okay, they're kind of doing their thing. This is fine for now. Boarding party. So I think what I like is go Bonder's Ornament into Environmental Science, just continue to hit land drops. Seems good to me. And do I want to get Mountain, or do I want to get, like, Second Black Source? I think it's between Mountain and Second Black Source. I think I want Mountain... Play it and pass. Nice. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six mana. So worst case, I just get to boarding party next turn. Best case, I just get to jam dino. If I draw a basic land, it's good because then I can go dino and then maybe the turn after I can go boarding party plus cram session. No need to play Thorn yet. They have a pretty big board. But this game four could be decent as well. All right, I'm just going to dino. Three, four, five, six. Loon is just still chilling here. All right, let's go Dino. 
what is this turn five turn four dino it was turn no turn five turn five bolt let's just bolt a sky fisher and now we have a pretty nice setup for a good cannonade coming up they're they're still just kind of doing the thing of like casting spare supplies and recasting it and everything but still feeling like i'm in a good spot here yep they're just looping through their deck but we get so much value another sky fisher okay again they're just doing the thing that they do but i mean we're doing good stuff here too Hmm. I just wonder if I should attack first or play boarding party. Like, I could just play cannonade and attack. Like, I could play cannonade plus double cram session this turn. I can also cram session for environmental sciences. I think I'm just going to go boarding party and see what happens. Seems good to me. A field trip sure now this is a little bit tougher i can just get an elemental summoning just as good value i'm gonna have at least eight mana next turn i think i like just elemental summoning it's just another decent threat that they have to deal with and then let's attack with both they don't have red man up for a lightning bolt right now yeah this was the downside where I don't get good value out of this cannonade, but this might be decent later. And I mean, I still got good value out of this. I, I cast a field trip off of it and killed two of their creatures. Wow, they're just going Glinthawk return to land, replay land. So they're they're really stuck on mana, and we're really developing ours. O-ring the dino, sure. And I have a lot of life gain in my hand here. Another dino? I think I'm just going to do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I hit a Bonder's Ornament, which I do, I can cast a Cram Session. Yeah, this is just like exactly how we drew it up, right? I can get a Fractal Summoning here. I have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I don't think I want to get Expanded Anatomy. I don't really think I want Intro to Annihilation, even though it's decent at killing this O-Ring. I think I kind of just want another Elemental Summoning. Like, these 4-4s are going to be kind of hard for them to deal with. We're just, like, learning so much over here. <laughs> Got that big brain play. <laughs> Double Lightning Bolt. Yeah, I'm fine with that. They still have five cards, but so do we. Chainer's Edict, huh? Now I could just go, let's see, three, I have nine mana, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. What I can do is I can go Cannonade into Edict. So Cannonade killed the Glenhawk, Edict away the Skyfisher, and then play Thorn. Seems good, right? Let's go Cannonade. Edict you. Playthorn. Get my Monarch going. If they take the Monarch, it could be annoying, but even then I might just be fine. I can learn again here. If I draw a land, I can play two four fours. Plus, I have this thorn. I can also just dino plus cram session. They just concede. That was that was exactly how we drew it up. I actually don't hate the one tranquility and the gorilla shamans. Gorilla shaman can just kill lands and tranquility. Like they played an O ring, so I'm expecting them to have some number of journey to nowhere as well. So I think I like all three of those. Cannonade's not great, but it's also not bad. Like, they have a lot of Glint Hawks. I'm not sure exactly what to side out. Chainer's Edict is like so so, right? I guess it's just not that good against 
most of their stuff. It's good value to be able to like flashback though. What if I do something like this? Do I keep, do I just, is two candidate the correct number? I could just side out all the Chainer's Edicts because of Thraven Inspector. And most of their stuff is just value based. Like I can just kind of ignore Thraven Inspector and just cannonade away those in Glint Hawks and then keep cast downs and bolts for Core Skyfisher. Yeah, I don't want too much removal. I think this looks good. Let's just try it like this. All right, let's go game two. All right, game two here. This hand is actually pretty sketchy. They mulled to six and they just conceded the game. They did not want to play against Jund PhD. <laughs> this hand wasn't that good. I think I was, I was thinking about keeping because I get to go play Ashburn, cycle the other one. And then on turn two, I can cram session for environmental sciences and then science and then eventually play bonders. And if I draw any lands, it's good. Okay, well, that might have been a mall, but all right. Clean 2-0, undefeated with Jun PhD. <laughs> Let's go round two. All right, quick 1-0 there. Not the most interesting match. Let's go uh, round two here against Muril O. Umbra. Opponent we've played before. Would you like to play first? Yes. This hand is incredibly slow. I think these are the hands like you're supposed to keep with Jund, but I could be wrong. This could, this might like technically, it might be technically correct to mulligan this hand, but um, I liked to not mulligan. <laughs> I like to just keep all my resources. If this Bonders gets countered, we could be in trouble as well. Ooh, the Menace, huh? The Riving Grove. I think I want to play this because then I can just start playing removal spells as early as next turn. That would have been nice to have on turn one because then I could just kill this now, but our hand is still pretty good. Especially if they just suit up this Death Blade. They're not doing that. Okay. I want them to commit something else to the board, like an enchantment here. This should be a really good matchup for us. We have three cast down, four bolt three Chainer's Edict, um, and we kept a, a Hyena Umbra. Okay. Well, now I can just cast down this when they're tapped out and then Edict this. At least that's the plan I'm going for. I also need to play a removal spell right now because um, I need to play a Gruel Turf this, this turn. So let's go cast down here. I cannot cast down the Trailblazer because then it just only kills the Hyena Umbra. So we kill this, play the Turf, Bounce the forest, and then pass. And then next turn, we can potentially go Bonder's Ornament into Chainer's Edict. Okay, well, I have to kill this again, but I'm not taking that much damage here, so I'm developing my board. It's looking good, honestly. There's a Rot Farm. I think I'm just going to stick to the plan of Ornament into Cast Down here. I suppose I can Cast Down on their upkeep. I could also just wait, but... I'm just going to cast down on their upkeep. So if they want to protect it, they have to use mana on their upkeep. Field trip would be pretty sick if it um, got the forest untapped, but doesn't quite do that. Again, this should be a good matchup for us. Okay, they do have a merge unscathed. That's fine. At least we make them spend a mana now. And Chainer's Edict plus Flashback Chainer's Edict should be decent. One, two, three, four, five. We don't have six mana next turn, but I can go like Chainer's Edict plus um, Field Trip. All right, now I'm getting hit for some damage here. I also do not have Pest Summoning. Okay, there's a Pack Mate. One, two, three, four, five. This is pretty tough. I mean, I don't think I'm going to be dead next turn. They can rebound their Emerge Unscathed here. I 
I can just field trip for intro to annihilation. That like deals with this almost no matter what because it's Carlos. I think I like that. I'm gonna do it. Field trip, get intro to annihilation, and just hope to not die. I guess I can play Chainer's Edict this turn. I think I'll, I think I'm gonna do that. Get intro to annihilation, and then just play Chainer's Edict. They sack this. Then they need to give this plus six power. They need they they basically need like another ethereal armor. I'm not sure if that's even enough. Okay, looking good. So this is six power. If they played another armor, each armor would be plus three. It's just hard to calculate because this is already giving plus two. So it would be seven, eight, nine, ten. I think it would be ten power with another armor, because it would be plus four more. So they need armor plus another spell, which I don't think that they have. Next turn I have four, five, six, seven, eight mana. I'm just gonna go for intro to annihilation. If that resolves, I mean I think they're dead and I guess they can have Karametra's Blessing. Oh wait, I guess I just go for Chainer's Edict. Four, five, six, seven. Yeah. I think that's the safest option. Let's do it. Chainer's Edict makes this matchup a lot better. Yeah. Now I still have this to deal with like the next threat they try to make. This is just looking great. Just everything going like as planned here. It's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mana. Let's just four, five, six. Let's just play boarding party. See what we hit. We hit field trip. I can just go expanded anatomy here. I think that's actually a fine line. This deck is like, I mean, these matchups are obviously have been good, but this is like pretty sick. <laughs> Eight, five vigilance. What's up? Nice. Expanded anatomy and popper, huh? Can't have beat plus two plus two. <laughs> I mean, they can't beat cast down, cast down, chainer's edict most likely, but those field trips were sick. I mean, having this was really nice and always having access to it in this matchup, like every game is just so sick. All right, I don't hate this. And again, Cram Session for Intro to Annihilation is just key in this matchup. Like, they need Karametra's Blessing to be able to stop that because Emergence, Scathe, and what's the other one? Um, Benevolent Blessing both give protection from a color, and this is colorless. So yes, they draw a card, but if they make one big thing, I just get to be like, boop, gone. Okay. I can cut Thorn. I can go down to one Thorn, especially on the on the draw. And then I could cut a Fuel Trip or a Bonders Ornament. I think the Learn is actually pretty good here. Could also just cut one Dino. I think I'm just going to try this. I was like about to add the fourth Chainer's Edict and fourth Cast Down in the main. Um, but I was like, I want the Cannonades and I wanted the Thorns. Maybe one Thorn main, like four Edict or four Cast Down main could be better. But uh, yeah, this is sweet. Tranquility is actually pretty sweet in this matchup as well. On a lot of boards, it's just like going to be so hard for them to come back from like a Tranquility killing three enchantments. Yeah, I'll keep this. This looks fine. Sacred Cat, huh? Okay. I'll just Ash Barons. I don't know if I'm going to get Mountain or Swamp yet. I mean, I have a, a Lightning Bolt. Cartouche. Okay, can't stop that. But I do have this Tranquility. Probably just getting Mountain because I have Bolt. I don't care about the lifelink from this, really. 
and they're just leaving mana up now. Yeah, I'm just going to cram session. Maybe just get intro to Annihilation right now, just because I'm going to want that, most likely. I'll immediately draw Mountain is not ideal. But game for life, learn is solid here. Yeah, I'll get intro. Just seems safe. Like, now they know I have intro in hand, or Annihilation in hand. I guess there's just multiple intros. It's like, it's hard for them to go so hard on one thing. And they definitely have an Emerge Unscathed. There's something here. There's, like, no question about it. So I think what I'm going to do is go play Forest, play Bonder's Ornament. There's no huge rush to tran Tranquility yet. And then I'll just leave up Bolt. I'm not going to Bolt end of turn. I'm not going to bolt even on their upkeep. I wanted to force them to leave mana up. So I'm just going to keep forcing them to leave mana up. That is super fine. That doesn't seem that great to bring in. I mean, I guess I have cast downs, but yeah, it doesn't seem that good to me. So now I can just go lightning bolt this end of turn. Oh, then I guess Hyena Umbra just falls off. I guess I'm just not going to even do that. Well, then I can... They might even just protect it. And I'm fine to save this Tranquility. I'm just going to do this. It's pretty mana efficient here. And if they just let Hyena Umbra fall off, I can just cannonade away their board. Which seems pretty good to me. Mutagenic Growth. Okay. I'm at 14, so I'm fine for now. Packmate. I can go field trip plus environmental sciences this turn. And then just take a hit from whatever they have. And then do something in the future. I don't want to intro to Annihilation this yet because, yeah, they could have Karametra's Blessing still. I'd rather wait as long as possible. And I, I do want to wait on the Tranquility as well. All right. Let's just go field trip, get environmental sciences, play, play that, get swamp. This just develops my mana, gains me a little bit of life. Seems good to me. I mean, I'm only taking five right now, and if they want to commit more, then I get to have a better turn in the future. Like again, if they want to commit more, they get blown out more in the future. And if they don't, I'm not taking that much damage yet. So this seems fine. Now I have enough mana to do like mul mul play multiple good spells here. So I have six mana. Now I think I might just play Tranquility and then leave up Cannonade and then just play a Gruel Turf, and just continue to take it slow. I like it. I love this art on this Tranquility, by the way. That is sick. Okay, just kill their stuff, play a Gruel Turf, rather than my Swamp, and then pass. I could upkeep Cannonade. But I could wait for them to try to commit an Aura as well. I think I'm going to wait for them to try to play an Aura. Otherwise, I can just take three and then end of turn cannonade. And then I still have this pack made. I have a Bonders. So it's still feeling good. I know I'm down to eight, but I don't, I don't hate my position here. They might just be slow playing around like cannonade basically and intro. Mana type? Oh, God. That's disgusting. I was not playing around that. That's for sure. All right, let's go cast pack me. I have a bunch more candidates and there's a bolt. Bolt is good. Let's go thriving grove named black. They know about swamp and forest in hand. They do not know about this bolt. And they know about Intro to Annihilation, so they know three out of our four cards, but 
still feeling decent about this game. I have a bunch of mana out now, and I have a Bonders. Benevolent Blessing. Let's go for this. Now, if they protect it, it's not that bad, because I still have Intro to Annihilation. Emerge Unscathed, sure. It's not like they're hitting for that much damage. They only have one card left. And I'm just, like, sitting here with this in hand. And I have, again, Bonders. And just Mutagenic Now? Row red, and then Mutagenic Now to go to zero cards in hand? Why? Again, this doesn't have protection from the color from Heartless. So they hit for three, I go to five. Then they have Emerge Unscathed coming back up. Sure. They don't really have much going on, to be honest. The Menace. Again, waiting as long as I can on this, I think is ideal. They're only hitting for one next turn. So I can probably just draw a card with Ornament on my turn. I don't know why they're stopped on my upkeep. But I'm liking my position here. There's a Lightning Bolt. Love it. So this is pro green right now. Um, I guess they're going to emerge unscathed one of their other things to give it pro green. And then I can just let that resolve and I can just bolt this. All right, let's just start by drawing a card right now. I guess I should have left up one mountain uh, just for, for this bolt so I don't have to tap Gruel Turf. See if that ends up costing me. Doesn't look like it. All right, play Swamp. And then on their upkeep, Emerge Unscathed is going to go onto the stack. I can bolt something in. Res They're probably going to Emerge Unscathed this. I could just let that happen um, and then bolt this. Pro green, pro black, but not pro pro red. Okay. Zero cards for them. I'm at five, and I'm going to be going down to four. I don't see why they wouldn't just Emerge Unscathed this. Doesn't make sense to hit any. Well, why are they hitting this? Because now I just get to go kill this and they don't have any attacks. Okay. I'll just pass. No no reason to cycle Ashburns right now. I'd just rather do it end of turn. Hyena Umbra. That's fine. I can always just intro to Annihilation to cap. And then they don't actually get to Embalm as well because it'll be exiled. So that's a pretty good um, thing to use intro on. I kind of want to just draw like Cram Session or my Cascaders now to just get out of like range of just getting like kind of cheesed by like an ethereal or armor on here or something. I don't even know what, but maybe something of the sort. Yeah, Lurna has been sweet in these matchups so far. It's just like Jund already has so much value and then we just added this like extra massive value package and Field Trip has been sick. Just the combination of giving you more mana and then tutoring for these overcosted effects is just like a really solid combination. Let's see if I can click. Just get another swamp here. Definitely want to leave the last forest in the deck in case I draw another field trip. Another bonders. All right, let's just start by drawing a card. One, two, three, four. Draw. Jun just doing the Jun thing here. I guess playing land was also kind of loose. Wonder if I should just exile Cat, let them draw a card. I mean, they need to commit more before they even get through it all. So, I think I think not. Should have left up red again, but at least I have Bonders up. Just pass. They just have a lot of bad draws, just like random one-drop creatures, lands, random protection spells that don't really do anything yet. I will snap off a block. 
Because again, I'm just sitting on this. Which they know about. Also, if I just draw a cram session, I can just get like a fractal summoning. And then just like that's one a multicolor, but just a massive multicolor creature. Alright. Speaking of learning, there we go. I could also just get intro to prophecy, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Making a huge creature right now has just got to be good, right? Let's do it. Make a 7-7. Seven, seven. I can attack for 3. I think also I just can just not attack. I think I just want to play it really safe, like... And just win the long game. I guess they could give their thing pro green and give it plus a bunch of power, but that would be pretty unlucky if they just drew those two things back to back. I don't think they really can do that. Boarding party, nice. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's go boarding party. Sure. GG's. Thanks. Yeah, they said GG's, man. Nice deck. This deck is pretty sweet, actually. It's like, I mean, I know these matchups have been good, but it's like the field trips are dope. The field trips are really dope. I'm really liking this deck. I'm excited for this league to come out on my channel. Okay, 2 0 with Jun PhD. Let's go round three. All right, welcome to round three. We're 2-0, undefeated, haven't lost a game yet with Jun PhD, and we're against Tinkmaster. This opponent's good. I think I played them twice. The first time they were on like blue-red fairies or just like a really solid deck. The second time they were on red-white combo of uh, like, what's that one three that whenever you target it gets like plus no plus three and then you can switch the power. Uh, it was like some brew like that. Um, so I don't know what they're going to be on, but they're they're a solid player. I know that this hand is really sketchy. We have no removal. We just have bounce ends. Like we're just going turn three ornament, and that's it. And then turn four, I could play a thorn, but I just don't have any interaction at all. I'm just going to mulligan. All right, this looks better, honestly. Let's keep. I can just put back a dino. It's just I'm pretty far away from that, and I already have a boarding party, which I just can cast earlier. Yeah, their deck is just, they're just going to be on a good deck. All right, let's just name black. That way I can cast down on two if I want. I can ash burns for a mountain. What are they on? They're just going to pass. I think I like actually just foretelling a pack mate here so I don't just like walk into a counter or something. And we just drew the mountain. Just foretell this. I think that's the best play against specifically Counterspell. Because, like, they would probably Counterspell Cram Session. Yeah, I figured they might go end of turn spell setter and then Ninja Me. But I can't just, like, indefinitely play around that. And now if they do it, I can just kill the Ninja. So, this is fine. Yep. Okay. See if they have another land. I expect that they do. And I'm probably just going to cast down this. They do. And they preordain. Okay. I'm not going to just try to play Pac-Mate and hope it survives. I think that's a really bad play. Because the way these decks win is by just protecting Ninja and connecting. So even though it's just like not efficient, I'm just going to cast on this now. I think it's just the safest line. And then I'll just cycle Ash Barons. Again, not an efficient play, but I think it's the safest line. And I just want the game to go long. These Cascaders can be pretty annoying for blue decks. And yeah, they don't do anything. This is looking good. I can double spell next turn as well. Um, get Swamp, right? Field trip. 
I could go for Bonders, but then if it gets countered, I don't get to double spell. I feel like I could just lead Cram Session. Um, and then they may or may not counter it. And then I could just go land Wolf. I'd rather Wolf Resolve, and then I'm just going to just put this Cram Session on the stack and see what happens. I actually like Cram Session a lot. Yeah, counter spell. They might have double counter here. But I was I I on purpose didn't play the land because I want them to be like, well, maybe they don't have a land for this wolf, so I'll go for counter. And they would have countered this, I think, so really happy with my line. I did want this to resolve and go get environmental sciences, but can't have everything, right? Looks like we're just against blue black fey. I think. I want to just field trip here. I can only play one spell. Okay, they just agony warp my thing. I mean, they didn't have another counter last turn. I still think field trip is actually just a really strong play here. I'm probably just getting environmental sciences because I just want to continue to hit land drops. If I draw an untapped land, I can boarding party next turn if I want. Otherwise, I can go boring or bonders plus environmental. All right, let's just lead environmental sciences for swamp. I guess I could get forest, but I, I'd rather leave the forests in my deck. And then play a bonders. Hopefully, this resolves. Nice. Now I'm just in a great spot to start playing cascade spells. They have a spell stutter in hand that we know about, so got to be careful with this bolt, but still feeling like I'm in a great spot. Their draw seem to be a little awkward, especially that we dealt with the ninja early. They Maybe they misplayed by going for ninja too early. Okay, they brainstormed, then preordained two cards away, and then they're just conceding. Nice. <laughs> We're just like grinding with these orange cards. This has been really sick, honestly. I don't know if I need a third cannonade. Thorn seems a little bit sketchy against like their deck. I know it's a decent way to like just take over the game and they might have thorns as well, but it just seems a little risky. Chainers is also like not necessarily exactly where I want to be. They just have a lot of like dorky creatures like um, Barry Seer. Spells that are spray that just they can just easily sack to edict and I don't get to like kill the high value targets like Gurmag Angler and Ninja and stuff and I I think I do want four, three cannonades and the pyroblasts. All right, let's just try this. Take out thorns and an edict. Bring in two pyroblasts and a cannonade. Looks good. Pyroblast helps this matchup a lot, but I am loving this deck right now. Let's go game two. All right. Game two, we just have to mulligan this hand. Six land boarding party. Yeah, we're going to get there, but we need interaction. So it's mulligan. Two bounce lands. Sucks, we're going to five. This looks good. Let's keep. Put back dino and swamp. Okay. I mean, this hand looks like the best hand we've had so far, honestly. We have two good pieces of interaction. Okay, now I lead Swamp, and then I'm going to play into Cycle Ashburns, getting Mountain. They don't have another land. They preordained, bottom-bottomed, and then they are just missing. I know, I know the feeling. I've been there. Trust me, I've been there. We're not really doing anything either. We need to hit more lands, but... Are they just going to concede? GG's. Wow. Is this just like a gift league? Like, we're just being gifted matches over and over? <laughs> wow, preordained bottom bottom, missed on lands, and we're just mold to five, and then we were functioning. Okay, so we would have drawn Fiery Candidate, played land pass, and then we would have drawn Field Trip, cast it, and then missed land drops. I mean, this game wasn't over. I mean, we were going to shuffle, but wow. Have not lost a game with PHG done, P, 
Jund PhD. Love the name too. Also, I was thinking it could be like Dr. Jund because you have to you know learn a lot to be able to play this deck. Um, so that's another that's another decent name. Obviously, like the most standardized name that just makes the most sense is just Jund Learn. But come on, Jund PhD is sick. Let's go round four. Let's try to five zero this thing. All right, round four. Still undefeated in games, never lost a game with Jun PhD. Let's go. We're against two for one for two. It's a good name. Would you like to play first? Yes, I would. His hand is awkward, but I think I'm supposed to keep. Obviously, we need lands, but I can foretell a pack mate on two and then cast it on three. So that gives us another shot out of land. And even if I miss on lands, I can just slowly be pack mating here, which, yeah, that's not good, but if I draw any basic, then this hand actually becomes pretty solid. And we're against Affinity. Okay. Guess I get Swamp. I'm not sure between Swamp and Mountain there. Nice. Land is good. Well, I'm definitely still just playing basic, foretelling, because then next turn I can go cast plus tap land. And I, I like that better than playing Grove into Ornament. Prism. Okay. Not a super scary start from the opponent so far. No Frogmite. Let's go Wolf and Tapland. Nice, it's named Red. We have two Gorilla Shamans, so that helps a lot in this matchup. I mean, our what our six card sideboard has been pretty good so far with the Tranquility, the two Shamans, the two Pyroblasts, and the an extra Cannonade. Just really hard hitters out of our six card sideboard. Draven into Mirror Enforcer. Icker Wellspring, three, four, five, six, seven. Mirror Enforcer? Or do they not have it? They don't. Now I think I like play Ornament. I guess I don't even bolt this, right? There's no real reason to bolt that. I guess the reason is, like, what else is that great to bolt? It's not that great to bolt a Tog. I get to get in for three damage. I could just start by attacking and see if they block. If they block, that's fine. All right, I'm going to do that. I don't think they're going to block. Definitely need more lands here, so good that we drew one land, but bad that we haven't drawn any more. Could just bolt now. Let's just see what they do. I mean, if they play in a tog, I can bolt that and then just force them to sack one artifact. But that's not that good. Thought cast. Okay, I feel like I'm in trouble this game, especially missing a land drop there. I really need to hit land drops. A bounce land would have gone a long way as well. Like if this Thriving Grove was a bounce land here, we would just be fine. Because I would have hit a land drop and then hit another land drop. Double Divination, each for one mana, and Basic Island. Okay, it looks like just pretty standard Jeskai Affinity, most likely. Can I just please draw lands for like the next two or three turns? Is this a Tog? Just another Icker Wellspring. These Icker Wellspring versions have been picking up in popularity. I'm just going to bolt this. I'm so tight on mana that I'd rather just get it out of there. Taking one isn't the biggest deal, but this bolt's not doing that much anyway. It would have been interesting to take one and just bolt face right now and just try to like sneak in a hit with boarding party for the win or something, but I don't love that either. I like just getting their chump walker out of the way. I'm gonna if I don't draw a land, I'm gonna plan to just cast pack packmate here. Try to draw into a land. If I do draw a land, I'm probably gonna pack cast packmate anyway. Mirror Enforcer, okay. Boarding party. Land, please. Kept a two lander, drawn one land. Okay, nice. That's good, that's good. I think I'll just pass the turn. I'll probably just go for a double block on Mirror Enforcer. They'll play a Galvanic Boss on one of my pack mates, and then I'll hopefully deal three to the Enforcer and then bolt it. It's not great, but 
think that's my best line. Obviously, three threes are not very good against four fours. It's just the way it is. They just have, if they ever draw a tog, they get to just draw two free cards. If they have a tog plus bling, I'm just like pretty much dead to that. Damn. Let's see if they sack right now. If they do, do I bolt in response? I mean, they could have fling here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So a fling is actually lethal right now. I can just hope they don't have fling and just do this. I think it's not good. I'm just going to let this happen. If they have fling, I'm, I'm dead regardless, so it doesn't help to bolt. They're not going to let the Atog go. They would have just sacked the Icar Wellspring anyway. So I think bolting the Atog there doesn't do anything. It looks like they have it. Alright, looks like we're going to get our first game loss here. And red mana. Yep. No reason to concede yet. Let's just make them show it. We just, even if we didn't get stuck on lands, we probably would have been dead. Their draw was pretty solid, and they just drew into the combo. And the combo is really good against us. So let's just draw some Gorilla Shamans in games 2 and 3. 23. And there's the fling. Cram Session would have allowed us to survive, but obviously they wouldn't have gone for it. All right, Shamans coming in. Bolts are not very good. Tranquility is interesting because they could have Journey to Nowhere, but I don't think I want that. Cannonade is also pretty bad. They look like a pretty standard affinity deck, just they don't always have Journey to Nowhere. I mean, it might be better just to have this just in case because Cannonade again is really bad. I could just bring in actually like a couple of copies of Pyroblast. I could at least counter Thoughtcast. And then again, I think I've got some construction or something. Let me close the windows. I was saying, I don't think Bolt is actually good in this matchup or Tranquility. Why don't we just do this? Not bring in Tranquility and just. Even though these are pretty narrow and not that good, I still think they're probably better than Lightning Bolt. Lightning Bolt just can't kill Mirror Enforcer. It can rarely kill a Tog. Going Face isn't that good. It can kill a Thriven Inspector, sure, but that's not where you want to be. Let's just go like this. Again, I think Cannonade's just not good. So, a couple Bolts. Yeah, Pyroblast isn't great either, but I think it is better than Bolt or Cannonade. And... If we see a journey or two, we can bring in the one tranquility, but otherwise we can just not, not bring it in. All right. This is a classic slow clunky hand from Jund. Let's snap it off. Just lead with our tap land and then go swamp foretell. Dark Steel Citadel star. Edict is good. Tell this, and then next turn I can go cycle Ash Barons, cast the Wolf, which is probably what I'm going to do. I think I just get Forest. Yeah, I think I'm going to get Forest. Could get another Swamp or another Red Source. Okay, there's a Forest. So now I'm just going to go play Forest. I guess I could just play Pac-Mate, because what if I draw a tap land? I'm going to want to play that, or a bounce land. All right, let's just lead on play Pac-Mate then. Another Pac-Mate. Okay, now we play Forest and pass the turn. Playing on just Cycle Ash Barons here, and then next turn, potentially just cast another Pac-Mate. Could just also potentially cast a Thorn, depending on what they do. Now, don't love it. Because I don't want them to be able to take the Monarch. 
This is interesting. I think I like just playing another pack mate. Uh, this is kind of sketchy now. I think I get actually second swamp. I think second black source is better than second red source because this is already a red source. I could also go bonders into foretell pack mate. I think I'm actually going to do that. Yeah, let's do it. It allows me to play Bonders this turn, gives me more mana on future turns. I like it. I can just take a hit for four off this. Maybe find a removal spell for this, but yeah, this Thraven is annoying against this Edict. Did not like seeing the Mirror Enforcer here. I need to find uh, the Gorilla Shaman ASAP. Kill some lands. Maybe kill a clue with it. All right. Nice. Another Edict is actually good. I do want to try to draw into a land. So let's start with Wolf. Cast down. Not a bad draw. Just cast down the Mirror Enforcer. If they play in a Tog, I can also cast down that. Obviously, a Tog plus Fling is going to be good against us regardless. There's nothing we can really do about that. Galblast us? That is not a good sign for us. Okay, might be going down here. <laughs> That was aggressive. I mean, maybe they just have a bunch of Galvanic Blasts in hand. That's a possibility. They just have these stars and a clue. I wonder if they're going to fling this. Should have maybe cast down at the end of my turn. Do they have enough mana for fling? Well, they don't fling anyway. I think it's probably correct for them to not fling because if they draw a Tog, they can just kill. No. Now they can draw two, try to draw into fling, or they already have it. I feel like they have it. Especially the, the way they were playing. Maybe not. I mean, they, they still might. Yeah. Yeah, it's game. They could just be trying to draw into fling still. But why would they play this so early w without having the fling already in hand? Looks like we just got comboed twice by Affinity. Sucks. Wanted the 5-0, but wasn't in the cards. I don't think there was really any other lines I could have taken. It's not like Cast Town would have actually worked here. I'm not going to concede. I'll just make them show it. They obviously have it here, but... They're just going for full damage. And they definitely have it. Okay, GG's. Died to Affinity, co got comboed twice. That's the danger of that matchup. But still 3-1. and one. Let's try to 4-1 with PhD Jund. Let's go. All right. Round 5, final round against Magic Domain. Cannot keep this one land hand. It's Mulligan. If we had two lands, maybe we could keep a Cram Session, but it's Mulligan. We actually haven't been drawing Cram Session and Field Trip that much. Snap keep this. Just gonna put back a bonders here. I'd rather have one bonders, one field trip, I think. This hand is slow, but it's definitely a keep. Burn, I mean, should be a good matchup, assuming I mean we might die fast this game, but alright. Now I play forest and then get swamp so I can cast down this. Yeah, we just want to draw a cram session. So it sucks we couldn't keep that first hand in this matchup, but I think overall this match matchup is very favorable for us. Because we just have four cram session, which is just like two mana gain four plus draw a two mana gain two. It's just so good. 
if we just ever draw a cram session, it's like it's tough for them. Okay. Getting hit. Gonna pass the turn here. Just gonna cast down the lava runner before damage, obviously, but in trouble this game. Assuming I don't find cram session. If I do, I think I actually have a decent chance to win. They're just gonna start by attacking, which I will cast down. No real reason to wait, but um, I don't think there's any real reason to play it early either. Yeah, probably just playing a field trip next turn. I can get environmental sciences, gain two. Rift Bolt, okay. Chain Lightning. So I'm essentially at eight. There's a pack mate. Yeah, let's just uh, go basic plus field trip and hope to not die here. Definitely taking gain two life. Could have like one or two weather in the sideboard, but again, I think this matchup is fine as is. So I don't think it's worth it to use a sideboard slot. And they have they don't have the uh fire blast yet. Okay. So let's just go play bonders. I want to play this land, but I don't think I really can afford to. I think what I'm gonna do is go. Play environmental, environmental Sciences, get Swamp. Play Swamp, play Bonders, leave up Bolt for like a Lava Runner. So I'm at four. And they don't have a Fire Blaster, they haven't shown one yet. They draw land. Curse of the Pierced Heart, okay. And that's gonna be bad news. They have a Bolt as well. All right, that sucks. That was a pretty good draw from them as well. Right, cannonades don't do anything. I can just put like some bad um, summonings in my deck. <laughs> do I even put expanded anatomy in my deck? I think definitely one elemental summoning should come in. And then I guess I can just bring in Tranquility as well. Try to blow up a curse, just one for one. It's pretty bad, obviously, but I think it's better than bringing in like an Inkling summoning or something, right? I just never want to draw this. And I want to leave both environmental sciences in the board to just tutor for, because I have eight learn cards. So it's, I think it's better to have both in the in the board than, than one in the main. All right, let's go. Feeling pretty good here. Would you like to play first? Yes. There's no cram session here and all I have is a bolt. I can just mulligan like to try to find a cram session, essentially. The only thing is this hand is like serviceable, like this hand works technically. I think I'm supposed to mulligan. All right, this hand's not very good, but I'm gonna keep. I don't wanna go to five. I tried to mulligan to try to find like our hate. I'm just gonna put back a boarding party here. I don't necessarily need two of those to win. Oh man, this hand is just not good either. Maybe I should just mulligan again, go to five. Like having a bunch of cards isn't really what's important. Like, all these cards don't affect the board, really, and they're not cram session. I'm, I'm going to mulligan. I'm going to mulligan. Finding cram session is so vital that I really want to. And not having the cram session and not having removal spells, like, what if they just play a Thermal Alchemist here and I'm just like, okay, I don't have any answers? It's so bad. Like, yes, this hand technically could work, but let's just go to five. All right. Snap keeping this. Dino, get out. It costs seven mana. And as weird as this is, maybe I put back Wolf. 
could put back wolf or could put back field trip. I think I'm actually gonna put back field trip. I want the chainer's edict actually. All right. And then I just drive in grove named black. And I might just end up playing Ash Barons in order to cram Session on two to be efficient. Just makes sense to me. There's Lava Runner. Okay, well now I'm just going to Edict on two. Don't want to take any damage from that. I might miss a land drop by playing this way, but I think it's worth it. Curse. And a Thermal Alchemist. It's a problem. And there's a field trip. Missing a land drop. Don't have any more removal spells. Yeah, looking pretty sketchy here. I have three cast down, two more edicts, four lightning bolt in my deck that I just need to find. Drawing bolt would probably be best because then I can environmental science for mountain and bolt this. Yeah, going to five. They have a good seven here, just brutal. Okay, we do draw forest. I think I'm just gonna play a field trip here. And then I can just get another environmental science. It just increases my overall mana. Seems good to me. Next turn, I can either play two environmental science, which I'm probably going to do because then I can play a boarding party on turn six. So, yeah, I'm taking a lot of damage here, but um, damn, this sucks. Their hands have just been good and mine have been pretty bad. Even though I found this, it was just like their hand was good, so it might not be enough. Damn. Dino. I might just need to play Packmate here. They have three cards left. I wonder if they kept a one lander because they paused for a while and then they just immediately drew the land. I'm at eight. I need to just hope to hit land, right? If I go to 12, I'm going back down to 10 and then nine. It's just so bad. They definitely have three spells in hand. It's just shitty. Sucks to go out this way for sure. So next turn I have to hope to boarding party into like a good removal spell for Thermo and have them just have like a kind of clunky hand of like, I don't know, multiple curses or yeah. Just stuff that doesn't really impact that much. Maybe they have more lands, but more spells is going to be brutal. Do they not really have anything? Maybe they have like some number of Searing Blades or something. All right, let's just do what we can do. Removal spell for this. Nice, okay. Now we need to draw another, we just want to hit another cram session now. We've already used both environmental sciences, so we've gained eight life this game and we're still at nine. Fire blast, jeez. So they put me to three or to four. Can't attack. They have land searing blaze, it's just game obviously. No, opponent, please. <laughs> GG's. Pretty brutal end of this league, but I had a lot of fun. This league was like, honestly, I had the most fun playing this league that I have in a long time. 3-0 into 3-2 sucked. Um, got crushed by Affinity and then just like, that was like some of the best draws from Burn I've ever seen. So that'll happen. Burn, when they draw really well, it's tough. It's really tough. Again, I think the matchup is fine. Like we gained eight life that game and our hand was so awkward and we had a chance 
their draw was just too good. And then they even had the extra land into, into Searing Blaze. But I actually really liked the, the learn package. Yeah, your sideboard is small. It's like a six card sideboard because of it. But having these just gives like so much utility in game one. Like when we were getting intro to Annihilation, it was just so sweet. So I really like the deck. Honestly, I would just run it back. Um, I don't know if you need the bog. Could even have a fifth forest instead of it. Um, that might be better, honestly. But uh, I would just run it back. I liked the sideboard for the most part. Don't know if you need the third candidate, but against like Bully and Elves, you're going to really want it. So yeah, list was sweet. Highly recommend. My channel is youtube.com slash snapbolt. Check it out. Subscribe. Like this video. Comment down below. Let me know what you want to see next. Let me know if you like this deck. And of course you like this deck. This deck is fucking sweet. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Till next time. Peace.